guy needs a new daily driver. So I did the right thing and went on eBay and bought a Plymouth Duster that doesn't run. And this morning at about 8 million early o'clock, that was delivered. So I'm going to take a first look at it with you guys, see if we can get it to fire off and then, you know, we'll go, we'll test on her. This cord is just a mess. Well, here she is. It's a 7.4 garden variety. It's not the gold or the space or whatever other made up trim levels Mopar did. But the reason I paid a little extra to bring her in from Utah is she's pretty solid. I mean, this is probably the most solid duster in Minnesota now. And great base to work from because guy might actually hang on to this one for a little bit but this is all the pictures I saw was about an angle like that and that and she is a little rougher than I had hoped for but that's okay someone completely destroyed it by rattle canning the interior but ooh, I got a cooler and that's not a good sign the old air cleaner inside but it's got floors and rocker panels. That's also not a good sign. The old alternator laying on the floor. These rims are hideous. I gotta get rid of them right away. This is the worst of the body damage, really. And I'll probably just Zeus in a little patch panel there. Hit her with some more of this Walmart flat black and won't even know. And just notice we got some trim missing up here. That's all right. Wipers are gone, but overall pretty solid. Oh, and there's some more. Uh, got some rough kinkage. Dang it, guys! Stop putting your stuff on the roofs. Get out in the garage, take all the junk off the roof, and do the right thing and set it on the hood. See you. Slide them paint cans and all this stuff up here and you just denting up them roughs. And they ain't fun to come out, but I'll take dents out of a hood any day. Oh, <sighs> goodness. And ain't got no radio. This is pretty neat. She's got the fold down seat option. Now in 74, that's not very rare because 74 was the highest production year but that is kind of a different option to see so I'm glad for that and then the rear deck lid is much different to accommodate that uh, let me find a key and we'll see what kind of story the trunk can tell us I always go to the trunk first when you're buying classic cars it'll tell you everything you need to know well first thing I notice is I have a trunk floor in Minnesota that's great some more hack job paint work um, it's window sill plates bucket of bolts I don't know what that is sort of spacer doesn't look like the tail lights are gonna work yeah I'm starting to suspect we got an electrical issue here horns down here Interior trim. Oh, great. <sighs> this is going to be fun. Well, all right, I got to see if I got a fuse panel. I guess first thing. There's one in here, but it's a cobbled up here. I'm thinking the electrical is just not good. 
Okay, let's get under the hood of this bad boy. Okay. No. Well, whatever. Is what it is. That's a 318 here, and for you Canadians watching, that's 600 waffles. Here we go. First look at this guy. She looks like a beaut. The old positive as a negative. This isn't too tore up. Hmm. And that's what is this? Oh. Okay, the old alternator isn't even hooked up. So great. We got digital work to do for sure. Oh, look at that. That's fine. You don't need shocks. So this is a 318 two barrel, which is great for me because it has this firing order, which you're all very fond of. 18436572. Let's see, I'm not an expert at these, but um, so E44, so factory. 318 two barrel mm, K6 2K6 so it wasn't two tone and that is the factory color then which is dark metallic bronze um, the rest of these I don't know what they mean and I'm not seeing up oh, D34 so automatic transmission so it is a 318 two barrel auto so at least that hasn't been molested See what the door tells it. Yeah, but looks like they gave up on primering and kind of sprayed it there. I don't mind that color much. Probably one of the most common. But this looks complete-ish. We just got to figure out what's going on with the charging system, and then see if she fires. Turns over just fine. Let's see. Ignition's complete. I wonder. Oh. All right. So I don't know if you can. Well, you can see it. See how far I'm turning the engine, rolling it over. And the old uh, lightning whirler isn't moving at all. So that's pretty aggressive for timing chain slop which means she'll probably run, but it's gonna be junk. Perfect. Let's see. We got some juice in there. Water pump's been, I'm guessing that was replaced. It's probably raw cast, and they just went ahead and stuck the old uh, rattle can. Yeah, that's good enough. Of course there ain't no battery. Why can't I ever just have a battery? Let's go get one, I guess. I know there's one back here. Take it off the acorn here. Uh, this guy, good enough. That's from the early 90s. That'll work just fine. This guy has 900 cold cracking amps. That's way too much, which is perfect. Got to see what kind of juice we got out of her. Let's see. 11.5. That's close enough. That'll crank a 318. I'm sure there's no compression left. Uh, let's just hook this up and see what happens. You just give her all of it. That should work. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, jeez. Uh, got dash lights. That's good. Oh yeah, this is 
going to be just great. She fired though. That doesn't sound normal. Lots of smoke from uh, under the bonnet here. I think she needs some more fire maker. It's either a cracked manifold or the uh, donut gasket is completely shot, but I'm too lazy to look. And I can already hear it with my ears that uh, this thing is going to be really hard to time with that timing chain, and that just doesn't sound right, but we'll keep cranking on her anyway. A little more gasoline. That's probably good enough. Come on now. Let's do something here. There's no exhaust, which is great. Come on now. The old choke ain't working. Let's see if I can jam the choke. Sometimes a guy just needs a choke jammer 600 and get these in here and that'll hold the choke down. Let me show you. All you gotta do is take this little opening in there and jam her in that and then the old leverage, that'll hold her clothes for you. But then it's nice to have someone out here that can moderate the choke. But I'm just gonna see if I can get her to fire by myself. Come on now, let's go. Starter sounds new. I don't know if it's pumping gas. The gas gauge is empty, but I'm sure that's the wiring. A little more fire maker. That's, that's way too much. Perfect. It's probably going to blow flames now. There's the flames that I knew was going to happen. Initial assessment using the old ear meters. I think the timing is just not where it should be. So I'm going to do the right thing and just completely guess. And I'm going to bring her advanced a little bit, I think. Yep. That's what I'll do. Let's see. If I can get my ogre arms down here. Oh, I think I got her. Maybe. This is where the shorty wrenches come into play. The guys got them, they're handy. Harbor Freight has a pretty decent set. Get on there. Yeah, it's, come on now. Let's turn, let's go this way. There we go, she's loose. So, 318's turn clockwise. So to advance on it, you just go counterclockwise. And I'm gonna say right there for now. Just a touch of fire maker. Good enough. I'm gonna leave the choke off.
battery. But she fires and runs once I got the uh, old timing meter out here. What is going on with this carburetor? Am I getting fuel? Well, it's got fuel out of squirters. Okay. battery charger okay well that's been percolating guys had some time to put a thinking cap on and I've got a theory of what's going on with the electricals here because everything's unhooked the alternator and the taillights in the back and under the dash is a mess I think they were chasing a parasite or a drain probably so I'm going to show you how to test on that and I've got a couple meters you'll notice laying around the shop. I got my, my good one from 1967 and then uh, my other good one which is my $12 Walmart unit. And there's two ways to do this. There's using the positive side and the negative side. And I would highly recommend using the negative side because what a guy's going to end up doing is putting your meter in line for the digitals here and if you were to put the wrong selectomatic on there, set up your probes wrong, she's going to fry. So I always use the negative side because if you short out a ground to a ground, ain't nothing going to happen. But essentially, we're going to test this to see when we got the old key off, if the electrical system is pulling juice out over here, we'll be able to tell. So the first thing you got to do is pay attention to your meter. And you gotta change your probes because we want to get to the amp setting. And then uh, start off with your highest amp. Mine's a 10 on this little cheapie. So I'm gonna roll this over to 10 amps. Got my negative clamped in here. By the way, this isn't gonna hurt anything while she's charging because again, we're just putting it in line on the negative side. And I got my probe jammed in over here. And if I stab this in, you'll see static. It's at 0 0.02, meaning if you're a scientist, that's your base reading is 0 0.02 on there. Nothing's hooked up. That just means there's no electricity or draw. And if I plug in my 10 amp, nothing, meaning there's no draw on that battery. And to test it, what you do is you come over here and you roll your key forward. And now we've got dash lights and things like that running, right? So. We know we got some electricity. Sure enough, she's pulling 3.7 amps off the battery with the key forward. So that tells us we got the meter set up right and all that. So that debunks my theory. Um, I don't really know why they were doing that. So I guess we'll get her fired up again, hopefully. If we get her running long enough, we'll put the digital meter on the old generator here and see if she's throwing out some sparkulators and if not I picked up another one and maybe they were just chasing ghosts but I still don't know why they were who knows 40 years of idiots like me working on these cars you run into some interesting stuff fellers well let's give her another poll and see what happens
Yikes. That thing is rough. Oh, gotta save the battery. So this is putting out pretty much nothing. That needs to be swapped. Definitely here in that timing issue. It's got carburetor issues. Idle circuit is completely jacked on that. Probably a vacuum leak with 48. And she's got a massive oil leak already. So basically she fits right in with all my other cars. I'm gonna tinker with the carb just a hair. I don't have a kit for this, so this will have to do for now. Uh, adjusted the idle mixer screws to one and a half turns. And we'll fire it back up and I'm gonna bring the idle down a little bit. The other guy had the timing so bad, I'm sure he had the idle crank just to keep it running. And once we get her calmed down a little bit, then we'll snag out that alternator and put a new one in. Let's bring her back up. The starter's probably got no life left. I'm gonna back these out a little more. Sounds like she's got a really nice cam in her. Maybe I just leave her. No, it's not. She goes. <sighs> Gonna have to rebuild that puppy, and I just don't wanna. Probably good enough scooter around the block. Let's get that out. All right, got the new one in, and I think I figured out the wiring in here, kind of ish. Just kind of everything together. Fire it up, see if it charges. She's a two bumper. almost forgot we're gonna go for a spin I gotta address this whole uh, situation here and I got just the thing it's actually it's actually pretty gross in here it smells like a grain bin with burnt Pop-Tarts. Anyway, gotta get a seat belt on and get one of these retractable units so that you can just, you know, get down here, get it on over here. And then you got this lever, you just bring her into yourself like this. That's good. Okay. Let's see, get a little air in here. What's this thing? Don't wait. Oh yeah. 
It's a two pumper. Come on! There she is. Hardly any brakes. Of course, brake lights on. Belt squeals. I forgot to go tell my C7 pops. Oh, we got reverse. Get your motor running. Something, something, something. All right. And cranny slip. Perfect. We got great. This is gonna get interesting. Second gear. More cranny slip. Drive. Centrifugal clutch. Yeah, it'll come around. Nope, still not coming around. How do you get these? Yeah, this is not going to work at all. Oh, so much for driving this to work tomorrow. I got a tire that's about to fall off the front. Uh oh. Some logs? Probably should have checked. Come on! That's okay. Come on! Oh no. Two bumps. Come on! I think drive is the least slippy. Nope, take that back. It's definitely the most. Let's go to first. More junk. <sighs> Emphasis on junk. Well, in addition to the shock being messed up and wobbling out a hole in a guy's shock tower, I just shook that tire and yeah, that Something wrong with that hub, wheel bearing. That's shot. Needs brakes. Not sure what's going on with the transmission yet. But I got an idea. I think since I'm going to be under the hood so much, let's pressure wash it and maybe that'll rejuvenate something under there and make it run better. I think the guy's going to kick this all the way up to the advanced level, just right out of the gate. We'll just sprinkle a little bit of this on there and see what happens. Here's your tech tip for today. Spray can lids make great car mats. That's going to work just fine. Sprinkle. <laughs> There. Now 
it just looks like straight junk instead of pure junk. And there's a little blue under there and a little more primer gray. I know what you're thinking. Guy's goofy. Wash the stuff that don't run right, but here's the thing. I know I'm going to be in there working, so I'll just spray her down a little bit. No one rebuilds a car to two barrel, so that means I got to put a fair barrel on her. And if I do that, I need a performance intake. And if you're going to bring all that air and fuel in, then you got to get her out. So you got to put some headers on it. And then if you're in that deep, you might as well fix the timing chain. But you can't do a timing chain without doing a performance cam. And then you got to do lifters and push rods. And then all that doesn't make sense unless you put the old springs in. So, you know, it's all just one domino effect. The good thing is Mopar parts are really, 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 really expensive and no one can afford them. So that's great. So I guess I'm going to put her in the trees for a couple days, start saving some money and selling transmission and lawnmowers and see if I can save up and get some parts for this girl. Where you can help me is I need a name for this. Dirty Duster, whatever. Whatever you got, bleep bloop it down there and hit me with it. And uh, subscribe for part 2 through 196, or however many there's going to be. I'm going to hang on to her, so we'll do some stuff. I don't know. Hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, appreciate it. Also hit the like button, apparently that helps the video out somehow. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.